Hi, everybody. It's Kevin Raber, and uh, welcome back. It's uh, the fall season, November, Thanksgiving coming up, just finished Halloween. Um, lots of stuff going on, as you know. But today uh, is a very special day for me. I'm reconnecting with an old friend I haven't seen for a number of years. Um, we both kind of lost contact with each other with the pandemic and the challenges of where we were today. But um, I want to introduce you to, to Joe Cornish, who I think is one of the, the finest landscape photographers. I've had the opportunity on a couple of occasions to work side by side with him. Uh, I've teased him a lot. Um, I, I used to call him Slow Joe, but this guy, Joe, is the most meticulous uh, landscape photographer. And, and just by standing beside him uh, on the numerous occasions I've been with him, I've learned so much. And I think this is something, even when you see the gray hairs that I've got, is the fact that all of you and all of us will always be learning something if we have the passion for photography the way we do. And um, Joe's located in uh, the United Kingdom. He can tell you the town, uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what his, some of his challenges are recently and how he's going to be moving forward in life. Um, so anyway, Joe, hello. Thank you for um, <laughs> spending some time with me today, and it's really good to reconnect with you. I appreciate it very much. It's a it's a pleasure, Kevin. It's uh, it's afternoon time here in the U UK, and uh, I'm speaking to you from home. Uh, our village is called Great Ayton. It's in North Yorkshire, uh, and so and yeah, we're just um, just seeing the back end of a yet another autumn storm out there, but it's on its way out now. So calming down a bit. Well, first off, make sure, and I'll put the links in on on uh, the description below in the video and in the article on uh, the site. Uh, to visit uh, Joe's um, websites and galleries. The photography that Joe does is just some of the best landscape photography that uh, I, I've seen out there, and I've seen a lot. So um, thank you. tell us a little bit about your history. You started in photography when? Uh, actually, when I was an art student. Uh, so 1976, probably, I picked up my first camera, and uh, really when I, my first year at uni, uh, studying fine art. And uh, and really, almost from the moment I started using it, I became addicted, even though I was really nominally painting and making prints and sculpture and installations and all sorts of things back then. But um, yeah, I, I love the camera from the word go. So did, how did you develop your landscape photography business? So it's a it's a curious one. The, the business. Well, that's a long story, Kevin. I better not go into into too much detail. But um, uh, I mean, landscape photography itself was partly a response to the fact that I'm, I'm fundamentally quite an introvert, very shy person. And uh, so being outdoors in nature, I always found very reassuring and sort of um, didn't have to worry about whether I was hurting somebody or offending anyone or or kind of, you know, being offended by them. Um, and of course, bit by bit, as you get older, you get a little bit more resilience on the human front. But uh, I'm more used to being around people. But I guess that's by way of saying that for me, the landscape and natural world has always been my source, my resource. Uh, and so uh, through the early part of my career, I, I did lots of different things, uh, but always wanted to move towards being a landscape photographer um, and was able to, to kind of do that more or less full time after I finished about nine or 10 years of doing travel photography for books. So from about 1987 to about 1995, 96. So, um, and then, yes, uh, with, uh, with a couple of friends, we started talking about developing a business. And then in 1999, uh, we, be we began it. And the idea was that we'd sell a few cards and a few calendars and, and see what happened. And that's how it began. Well, you, you have a, a gallery and a, and a coffee shop and a cafe, I guess. Yeah. Is that, and that's where you do all your work from? Well, it isn't, actually. Um, so it, it's really the idea of that, uh, that, of that business was that um, my colleagues would run it, and uh, which they generally have done. And uh, we have a few members of staff as well. Um, and, and I would get on with producing photographs and, um, and trying to encourage other photographers to get involved which is what's happened over the last 15 years or so so we actually have a wide range of photographers represented in the gallery and it's quite a big building for for uh, for the uk at any rate it's a big building maybe not by american standards um, but it's got several working spaces we can show 
probably 150 photographs on the wall at any one time or any other artwork. So we have lots of wonderful photographers uh, on display at any one time. So we have Paul Kenny and Charlie Kramer and um, uh, Graham Cook, David Ward, Lizzie Shepard, Linda Lashwood. I could go on. There's lots of, of brilliant, brilliant artists there. Yeah, it's quite a list, and um, and I've got one or two pictures up as well. But I mean, it's uh, for me the idea that has kept me motivated in it for for a number of years is that it should be a community hub, um, a space where photographers and or anyone who's welcome and can gather and be inspired about nature and about photography, um, and it has worked in that respect because lots of people visit, including many people from abroad. Um, but sadly, as, as you know, uh, we're having to close it at the end of the year uh, due to the financial situation. This seems to be, um, you know, a growing concern uh, and a growing trend um, with so many photographers that I know. There are so many great photographers out there, many of them, you know, having uh, been selling their work in their own galleries. And, and many of these galleries just have to they're shut down. There's, there's just not... Uh, the sales of images like they used to. Many of them are trying to make up the uh, the differences in workshops and finding that that is even a difficult challenge these days. Um, so I, I think, you know, sort of where I want to take the direction of our conversation a little bit is, you know, what do we do in the future? Where is photography going in the future? Um, what has happened and, you know, how do we adapt? And I think one of the things that that happens way too often. And, you know, I, it's happened to me. I mean, I've gone through a challenge like you for those people that follow me and know that, you know, I was pushed out of the, the studio and the gallery I had. And luckily um, I was asked to become an artist in residence at the Indianapolis Arts Center and was able to move all my printers there. And I've been teaching and running workshops there. And, um, you know, I, I landed sort of on my feet. Um, it's not like it used to be, but I'm, I'm making cha my own changes and adapting. Um, and uh, that's uh, what I think is probably the, the key. Um, you know, a, a guy named Tom Winninger early on in my life um, gave a lecture one time and it talked about paradigms and the fact that, you know, we fall into these paradigms of how we normally do things. And um, uh, we're, we're into that. It, you know, some people would call it being into the rut. But when you break the paradigm and rethink doing things, um, you you work your way to a new success that you didn't even know was out there. For me, you know, I was devastated when I was told that I had to be out of my building. I had no place to go. Couldn't afford to rent to many of the other places. And, uh, you know, luckily, um, things happen for a reason, I believe. And sometimes it takes us a while to re realize those reasons. And sometimes once, you know, we land back on our feet, other times we need to, to do things differently. So, um, you're going to be closing your, your gallery and studio um, in December, correct? That's right. And, and I have to say, I do take inspiration from uh, what you've been saying, because, uh, you know, at the moment I'm right in the middle of, uh, of the whole process and it'll carry on for a few months. Uh, just the complexity of closing down a limited company is, is quite uh, daunting. Uh, but it will we'll get there in the end. And um, I do think that uh, I suppose because I have a very much an arts background, I've, I've always believed in change. Change is inevitable and change is good. And so the opportunities that will open up, I'm sure will, you know, something will happen that, that will, um, you know, take me on a maybe a slightly different path. But I mean, just to, to your point, I think that if you think about what photographers, modern photographers have had to, we've had to relearn so much. You know, when you and I started out, we were, shooting film and uh, the, the the working principle was that because taking pictures just well exposed well seen well focused and uh, well crafted images was actually really really difficult on film especially if it was large format or medium format film there would always be work it would always be work for any photographer and all you had to do was produce a, a decent transparency and everything else took care of itself well now we have to be able to talk we have to be able to write, we have to be able to think, we have to be able to teach, we have to be able to lead. We have multiple skill sets and perhaps the bubble we've learned how to edit and, and editing is a, is a whole other field of education and endeavor. Um, so, you know, like you, I'm pretty proficient with Capture One, with Lightroom, with Camera Raw, with Photoshop. And I'm sure if I had to 
adopt another editing program, I could. Um, and I, I feel that I, I love teaching uh, that side of photography particularly. So I think along with these other skills that we've all had to learn, they will provide the basis for um, for a career in the, in the future uh, of some kind. And um, who knows exactly how that will look. But uh, I, I don't know if you'd agree, but I think those those are all new skills for us as photographers. Well, they are. And I think that, you know, the way I've broken it down recently is, you know, um, taking the, the uh, for lack of better words, the workflow of photography and slicing it up, you know, and I think, you know, first off, part of what we do as landscape photographers is, you know, we got to find a place and we got to go out and research the locations we want to go and find those locations and then connect with those locations. So um, it's always fun hanging out with with uh, Steve Gosling because um, Steve is one of those guys that, you know, sees and feels through his heart, very much like yourself. And, you know, of course, I'm a, I'm a lot quicker. I see a whole bunch of different possibilities. And it's not that I see through my heart, but I think I'm in a constant state of defibrillation. So my heart's going quick. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we all have our, our different methods of photographing and, you know, um, photographing the scene. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, there's a that part I don't think is going to change much. So, you know, that part stays the same. We still got to visualize the scene. We got to connect with it. I think you're one of the... the you know, the most incredible people to, to, to learn from because I've watched you connect with the scene so differently than I connect. So, you know, you, you, you've been able to slow me down on occasion when I've been photographing with you um, as, as, and, and see things a, a little bit differently rather than, you know, as, as quickly. I get too excited in the, the field. Um, I probably should take a Xanax or something before I go out and shoot a picture. <laughs> so, like, right so you shouldn't, you so shouldn't can, change, Kevin. <laughs> So anyway, that part's going to continue. But I think what happens after that is, you know, once we find the landscape and can put a frame around it, you know, we have to use the, the tools. And for you and me, we, we you know, work with medium format and, you know, large format. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we went for the detail on the scene and things. But, you know, now you look at the fact that, uh, you know, I have uh, a Sony a7R4, which is a 61 megapixel camera. You know, Fuji's making very affordable cameras in the 100 megapixel range. And, of course, you know, there's still phase one out there with a very, very large price tag uh, making 150 megapixels. And, of course, you know, none of those megapixels do you any good unless, you know, you're going to do something with them, such as making large prints and, and things. Uh, and, you know, I've done my own experiments. But what I'm getting off of my Sony a7R4 at 61 megapixels, um, if I make a print from a Fuji and uh, a print from the Sony and put them side by side, say at a 30 by 40 inches, uh, and invite people into the, the studio and look at them, they can't tell the difference. I mean, the, the, the quality of the, the sensors, the ability uh, of, of, of uh, capturing such a wide dynamic range, you know, to be able to handle high ISOs in such a way that we were never able to handle before, uh, you know, allow us now to you know, work with tools that are easy to take into the field. And I still think the difference, the difference between anybody else taking pictures and guys like yourself and myself and many of the other great photographers we know is the fact that, you know, there, there is a, a skill of seeing composition, seeing the image and, and framing that up. There, there are still people that go out with an iPhone and shoot a good picture, for example, but they sure. can't shoot a picture like a, a photographer that spent his life refining his craft like, like you have and, and many of our associates have. So I think that the, the big change will come in how we capture and what we capture with. So we'll, we'll still find a scene, but how we're capturing will change. And we're, you know, I've, I've been shooting with this new iPhone 15 and um, using the, the, the raw file in it. And I'm making 30 by 40 prints from it that are incredible. Now, you know, there are limitations you need to have to know how to do it, but if you process that image correctly and, and handle it right, you know, you can do it right. Then you can size it up in gigapixel and make a 44 by 52 inch print. I, I show these as examples in my printing classes because the capabilities of, of, of these cameras are, are so good these days. I, I still don't think they're going to replace the, you know, the, as I call them, the big boy cameras. But I think the big boy camera makers ought to start looking at what is happening with a camera you can capture in your pocket and start bringing some of that technology to their products. So, you know, I think it'll be exciting to see where the hardware goes. And then uh, the other segment, which are or two more segments, which 
I think, and then I'd like to hear your opinion on these, is you know how we process the image. Um, I kind of left Capture One in, in a fit uh, a while back and uh, adopted to the Lightroom, um, and it's kind of weird having you know been a, a VP of Phase One, but you know this whole new introduction of what they're doing at Capture One and the subscription services and everything just kind of you know, got to me, I guess. So um, I do know Thomas Noel pretty well, and, and Eric Chen, who does a lot of Lightroom stuff. So I mean, I know that the guys there and what Lightroom has done recently. Some of the tools in Lightroom are just absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm going back and reprocessing images now uh, because I can do things with these images that I wasn't able to do before. So that's, I think, one of the most exciting aspects is the tool that we have to pros process and do things with. And then, you know, after that is the, the other side of things is how we share and, and, you know, put our work out there, you know, whether it be through social media, which is kind of a, you know, big white elephant, I guess. It's kind of a necessity, but it's it's there, but I'm still a printmaker. I don't believe you have the photograph until you can hold it in your hand. It's got to be tactile. That's why you know, I, I do these fine art printing workshops that I do and, and have so many printers and I'm always printing. Um, so I think in that technology, when you look at where that was 10 years ago and where we are now, you know, and what we can do with it and the paper surfaces that we have, I mean, we're talking the quality like you and I never saw coming from film or anything else. So, you know, it, the photography is still there. What we do with it and how we do it is different. And I think that's the the secret. You might find that you don't need the gallery anymore, that, you know, you need to develop clients and work on more on a one-to-one -one basis with them and, uh, you know, share and show them what's going on, you know, in, in that direction. So I'm very optimistic, but I, I still don't have a clear path of how it's going to go. I just want to be able to exercise my options and all those things. So, how do you feel about that? I know I rambled on for a minute, which isn't like me <laughs> too much, but, you know, so do you agree on those four segments and, and how are you going to be approaching those yourself? Well, I think we'd have to go back through each segment one by one, but I mean, right back to the beginning of the of, of this part, uh, it, you reminded me that one of the things that makes experienced landscape photographers um, or one of our, our primary skill sets is location scouting. Um, and actually, yes, that that will always be true. You know, we we are, have a, a feeling because we have a feeling for nature, for space and form, and all of the textures and and colours that there are there. We, we know how to where to be when, how to get there, and all of the practical things. So that that's a valuable asset. I think there's uh, uh, just in terms of who do who do what can we do? Oh dear, I mean it's so. I, I think that inspiring others is a very important part of that, which wasn't something you brought up, but I do think that, um, you know, our our clients, our, our community, um, that even though I'm reluctant to sort of see it in this way, it, it is a kind of leadership role. Um, and part of that is is helping people um, to come to terms with the fact that life, their life is often not that happy, but photography is a happy place. And we're very lucky to be able to share that with them. And so I think that a lot of our, a lot of our clients come on workshops with us because they actually need time out, uh, time out in nature. Um, and to find that sense of reconnection with what really, really matters, which is actually always there in the natural world. It's just being able to see the truth, the, uh, the reality of the natural world unfolding before us every, every year, every day, every week, every month. Um, in much the same ways it has for hundreds and thousands of years, albeit with some pressures that have been applied to us, applied to it by by human um, activity. But nevertheless, its resilience is very inspiring and, and its beauty is utterly inspiring. So uh, I think that's part of our role, certainly to, to continue to do that, to help people have that experience of nature. I mean, I'm totally with you on printing. Um, I think printing is one of the great, gifts of photography and modern photography is one of the one of the great breakthroughs of digital photography so if we if we think just break it down briefly the photography tends to be kind of put into these silos of black and white and color and rightly or wrongly I, i'm not going to debate that but what i would say is that black and white in the darkroom is still was still and is still a great way to work but color in the darkroom was never a great way to work and and uh, you know, uh, there might be one or two photographers who were successful in creating amazing 
Color Prince in the Dark from Christopher Burkett ring, uh, comes to mind. But um, honestly, for most people, if they want to be able to make beautiful color photographs, then digital technology is absolutely incredible. And the, the, as you said, the surfaces of the papers, the quality of the papers today inspires you to print. And it's a it's something that we have to keep um, talking about and and trying to promote because uh, it's all too easy for pictures just to disappear and they will disappear if they're not printed. Um, print is the only medium that has a real track record in history. Uh, people will keep well printed photographs if they if they're inspired by them. Whereas, however great the photograph is, if it's on a hard drive, sooner or later it'll disappear. It just will. Uh, it won't be archived. I mean, there might be one or two archives that exist, but for the most of us, for our families, they'll go. And and so print is is vital. As for social media, I'm sorry to say this, but I just don't do it at all. I don't have any presence on social media. And that's partly because I, I made that decision a number of years back. It is probably, I may well be poorer as a result. I don't have any followers uh, at all, um, but I'm much happier as a result. So I can just be myself and not you, worry about it. You do have a point there. Yeah. You know, uh, it's it's a means of sharing and, and getting the news out. And I suppose a lot of the reasons why I still do social media is because I just have an awful lot of friends that I like to stay in touch with and share my photography with. But it doesn't make a difference, in my opinion. It, it you, you know, I'm talking to my fellow photographers and, and they're not willing to fork over dollars for my pictures as much as, you know, somebody who has an appreciation for a location they've been or, or, you know, wants something to put on their wall or differently. So... Yeah, no, no points lost there, Joe. Well, it's it's certainly as you know, it's not about point scoring at all, Kevin. But it is a, uh, it, it, I think that I mean, social media is necessary. I, I appreciate for business, and I've, I mean, the gallery. I think, I, and I promise you, I don't really know because I never look at any social media at all. I believe they have a Facebook page, and I believe they have an Instagram page, but they, of course, we won't do fairly soon. So, um, I, I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get away with not having any social media. Uh, once I'm just doing what I do independently again, but I'm going to try. And um, unfortunately, the people I work with, um, like you, I collaborate with. I have a lot of friends in photography, um, you know, and the the people I lead with uh, are Tony Spencer, uh, Steve Gosling, David Ward, uh, Mark Littlejohn, Mark Colwardine, very great photographers, all of them. And of course, they all have social media. So if they do a workshop with me, I get the kind of collateral benefit of <laughs> them promoting it. Um, but generally our workshops still fill up very quickly, which is it's gratifying. You know, one of the things that I've um, seen a trend in lately and I'm, I've been doing it is, you know, I think a lot of us, um, and I speak generally out there, feel that as landscape photographers, we need to create something that sits on a wall in a large print. I mean, look, look behind me, I have one of my pictures of stock nests back there. And I do have quite a few large prints in my house, and I've sold a lot of large prints in in my day of you know, various subjects. But one of the things that I've also noticed recently um, is that uh, I'm selling a lot more smaller prints. Uh, you know, the other area, I you know, I begin to shoot a lot of work on uh, the iPhone, and uh, I might use an app like Hipstamatic. And if I'm doing a landscape with my larger camera, I may shoot the same thing with the Hipstamatic app and do a double exposure of the scene. And, you know, those things have been good. And I made a whole body of work called Being Square, Seeing Double. And those things have sold well. So what I've tried to do is rethink a lot of things. And I think, you know, my encouragement to photographers and even fellow friends like yourself are, you know, to think differently and don't discount and say, I, you know, that just won't work or this won't do that. I'm finding out the more I change, the more I find, you know, are things that are different than anybody else is doing and, and leads us to new things. So, you know, have you thought much about where you're going in the future with your work? I mean, you won't have a gallery to do things. How do you see it proceeding from here? No, it's a really, really good question. Uh, I, I mean, I think different forms of packaging and presenting work is always good. I, I'm a great believer in change, as I said earlier. And um, so it's good to hear that you're able to make such a positive of it. I think in terms of my photography, um, I'm still really enthralled by just going out into the world and, and looking at it and trying to find a better way of connecting with it, with my camera. Um, it's still very much based on the eyewitness tradition. And there are, there are strong reasons for that. 
uh, which, you know, it's not at all, it's not a soapbox from my point of view. I, I love all sorts of different styles of photography, but um, maybe it's because I'm quite a simple person, but it's mainly, I think, because I genuinely think that beauty and the wonder of nature as it is uh, are what I'm interested in trying to convey or trying to connect with. So it's actually, it's actually pretty important to me that that color and texture and the light feel natural and, and that, that they, it kind of just makes you feel immersed or makes me feel immersed in where I have been at that time. Still an interpretation, of course, as to, as to what context it, it, it takes. Um, I actually think probably in my case, um, you know, my, my income, my main, uh, you know, work, work will come from leading, uh, and talking and writing, um, as it has done for a while. Uh, however, I do think I've got a few books left in me and they'll be, um, quasi scientific. Some of them possibly, uh, my son is an earth scientist. I think I might've mentioned that to you before. And he and I talked about collaborating on um, pr book projects. Um, I really do, am a great believer in the arts and the science as one, as one wisdom or one knowledge, not as a, not as a schism. Um, and that science and art needs to speak together and perhaps speak with one voice at times as well. So there's a, I'm very interested in how, Photography can play a philosophical role in in the discourse that we have in you know in our human societies and in our politics as well. That's uh, interesting that you you say that because um, I, I I feel that photography is a great bridge. Um, remember when we were on the Antarctica cruise and uh, you know we got sixty people and from what fourteen or fifteen different countries. And, you know, some of those countries were countries we, you know, might have a conflict with. We had a Russian crew. I mean, there was, you know, interesting, but everybody had one commonality. And I think we somebody said that on the trip is that, you know, if all these leaders of the world that are, you know, at each other's throats as they are at this point, I mean, it's a very, very complicated world. I don't remember it being this complicated. If every one of them would just take a day off or two days off, take a few pictures and begin to understand the joy. And, you know, that's the thing that we found is that no matter who you are and what differences you have in life, photography is a common thread that went through everybody, you know, that was on the, or on these trips. And it didn't matter who you were or what you believed in. You know, I just want to take a good picture. I just want to have fun in life and I want to produce art the way I wanted to do it. And, you know, the world could be a happier place if, number one, everybody picked up a camera and learned how to enjoy photography and they petted a dog once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I think both those are really, really good points, actually. Um, one of my favorite stories in history is uh, is Teddy Roosevelt going out to meet John Muir um, in Yosemite. And the two of them went out and walked together for four days. And when they came back, we had the beginnings of the first, well, Yosemite being declared a national park. But I think that if you, if only I've had these conversations with friends on numerous occasions, if only we could get the politicians to stop bickering together and take them out into nature with or without a camera, frankly, and walk and talk and become reconnected with nature, things could be very, very different. It's so they're all in a silos shouting at each other, surrounded by people and interiors and, uh, and buildings. And I just, I think it's the desperate need to reconnect with nature, to be outside and to remember what really matters. Photography is so easy for everybody to access these days. And, you know, it's so easy to take a, you know, a picture and appreciate it. And of course the world is run by photos when you think about it. I mean, what we're seeing coming from war zones and all the other things, I mean, yeah, you know, they affect how we are. Yeah. Um, and and it, it happens so quick. The fact that, you know, I can take a picture, you know, in, in Antarctica and, and upload it to all my friends around the world in a matter of minutes is, is, is kind of phenomenal when you think about that. Not, and, but you know, still the ability for photographs to influence you to make things work differently. Ed Pertinsky, who is an amazing photographer that takes a look at the, the landscapes, you know, that, that man has created, you know, whether it be through mining or pollution or logging or any number of different things and how, you know, man's affected this landscape really touches you when you, when you see his work. You know, um, there's, a, there's so much of that that, photography can be influential in and in regarding to making sure that we preserve the world that we have today 
and then it can be enjoyed by others. And, and oh, I totally, totally agree. I mean, the, the, there's one of the most famous phrases in the world is that a picture is worth a thousand words. And, you know, you, you can see the evidence of that every time you, you know, open up your news feed or um, you know, look in a newspaper. The picture is the thing that, you know, in many ways gives that instant connection with the reality of what happened. Um, and, and of course, if you think about the uh, thinking of smartphones in particular, this is just a fascinating technology. You know, 15 years ago, well, when, um, or a bit more than that now, isn't it? When Steve Jobs first announced the iPhone, and okay, there were already pictures that took, there were already phones that took pictures. But, you know, who would have thought that, that, that these years later, that there would be, that the smartest tech by a million miles in photography would be in a phone, not in a camera, because that's the truth. You know, the, the smartphones have got so much more sophisticated tech in than any camera has. And, and in, the camera manufacturers probably never catch up, but at least, you know, the, for example, in phase one, you have frame averaging, which is a very, very cool um, innovation, which basically comes from smartphone technology. You know, and I think, uh, and really smartphones, whether it's video or stills photography, they are they are pioneering all these new methods and techniques for image making. Well, you know, I think that's it's, it's exciting that way. You know, almost every scene I take uh, with any camera, I always shoot one with uh, the iPhone. Number one, because it, you know, it goes in the Photos app and, you know, it, it geo tags itself, locates it so I know where things were. And, you know, I can share it instantly and also make sure it's kind of like the Polaroid. You know, I can actually look at it very quickly, make some adjustments to it and say, yep, I can do what I need to do with this, you know, knowing what I can do. And, then, you know, then you can run it through a bunch of apps and, you know, throw texture screens on it, put birds in the picture, do all sorts of crazy stuff. So, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew you. I was waiting for a reaction from that. <laughs> I, I get enough of it from a few other people, which is kind of fun because, you know, sometimes I just try to, you know, irk something out of somebody here and there. <laughs> um, Joe, you know, one of the things that I, I want to stay in touch with you, and hopefully this is maybe the first of a, a, a video or two that we can kind of continue the conversation. You know, you're going through a lot of challenges right now. And, um, you know, any way I can support you and my audience can support you, uh, you know, we're there. But, you know, once, you know, you're out of there and everything's closed down in December, you know, you might just sit back one day and, you know, have a tea or, you know, maybe something inside your tea, a little shot of whiskey, and um, <laughs> begin to think about where where you're going to go next. Because I think you're about to, uh, as hard as it might be to move out of one thing, you're going to be moving into something new that is going to excite you and motivate you probably like you haven't had for the many years before. Um, you know, your photography is, is so exceptional. You know, you could make a portfolio of original prints and don't even have to make big ones about the best of, you know, Joe Cornish. I mean, you know, your, your stuff uh, and the way you shoot, the textures, the feel and the lighting, um, you know, you, you've avoided the trend of what I see a lot of photographers doing is, you know, darkening down their images and, you know, kind of making it very surreal and almost sometimes hard to look at. But your pictures always give the viewer something to explore. You know, you you find something and you you, you lock onto it and you, you bring yourself into it. You know, there's there there's all the things that I always preach about how to do good photography. You know, watch the dark spots, watch the highlights, look at your corners, do all the things. You know, we know all the rules, but you know, you sort of do that before you even snap the picture, which is pretty amazing. And you know, the 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 beauty of your work just still astounds me. And um, uh, I think you've just got to find new ways to, to share it out there with the public and, um, you know, share your, your knowledge and things. And anything I can do to help you share your knowledge with others um, would be wonderful. And you know, what I'm finding, too, now, too, by the way, it's interesting, is that, you know, sometimes when we do our workshops, we tend to try to talk to other photographers or people that are really into photography. I think we're seeing a whole new generation of people coming up mainly because maybe the mobile phone devices that are discovering photography that haven't found photography before. And, you know, these people that are discovering photography discover it at a much more accelerated rate than, than we did, where we had to kind of pick cameras and move slowly and try to figure out where we're going to go. You know, they're already learning how to see and, and, and look at things differently. And, you know, they just want to take stuff to the next level, you know, learn what to do, how to, you know, make the image better and, you know, then get it out on a piece of paper. So I think we are seeing somewhat of a, 
a new evolution revolution thing going on. I don't think it'll ever go away. The desire to make still images, uh, I, you know, it goes back 80,000 years. You know, we, we have, uh, you know, el- caves in Europe with uh, illustrations, which are, are remarkable, amazing. You know, they're just the ones that have survived. But human beings have been making still images, you know, for thousands of years. And, and, for, and what we do with photography is just the latest iteration of that. And it's the greatest at the moment. Um, I, so I, I think the... Because it's been so democratized by the smartphone, we will see, as, as you rightly say, people with no photographic background coming in, being enthused and inspired by photography. So, yeah, I think there is an audience there. Um, and, you know, I see that among the younger generation who I do know and work with, um, like Alex Nails, Simon Baxter, uh, both very successful with YouTube. And, um, I mean, they've they've had me on their, you know, their YouTubes as well. But... Um, what, what I see there is a lot of their followers, you, you know, they're not necessarily immediately interested in photography. They might be interested in mountaineering and woodland, which are those those two photographers specialisms. You know, and in Simon's case, he's got a wonderful dog and everybody loves his dog. So they come on to watch his dog. But he's also he is a brilliant photographer. And and so they learn from him and see he's inspiring them through his love of nature as well. So you, you can see that as as kind of leaders in their way, um, they're able to create an audience which does give them access to other forms of income. So that's all good. You know, here in the U.S., I don't know if you know this, but um, we now no longer have a monthly photographic publication printed. Really? There is no photographic magazine that's on a monthly basis left in the U.S. Wow. You know, outdoor photographer, which used to be a big one, that's gone. Popular photography, photo district news, mm. uh there aren't. Uh, Brooks Jensen still has his uh, magazine lens work, which is still, I think, one of the finest photography magazines out there. And he's going to be moving to that to a quarterly basis next year. Hmm. Um, one of the most uh, best resources for motivation in photography that I know of. And uh, he's a hell of a human being and, and a good friend, too. But, uh, you know, now we have to find new ways to share our information. Um I still subscribe at least to the digital versions of a number of UK uh, publications, but uh, you wonder how long these these publications can can stay um, relevant in that sense. So we have to find new ways to do things. So, you know, what I do with my website and, you know, what people do with their YouTube channels and so forth are, you know, the new way that as we move into the future that we have to share our knowledge and, you know, our, our, our passions, I think so. Yeah. Just kind of making note of that, you know, it's, that that part of the world has changed too. Well, one one thing I, I did want to say is that one of my um, the, the finances inevitably come up, don't they? We 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 touched on it a couple of times, and uh, um, I I'm never going to be able to make the sort of money I could I could twenty or thirty years ago. So uh, the way I get around it is by living a very Spartan lifestyle. Um, so try never never to put the heat on at home. I wear thermal underwear all the time in the winter. Um, big overcoat. It's not. It's quite a warm day today, so I'm not. And um, yeah, we we uh, we grow a lot of our own food in the garden. And of course, I'm not. I'm just saying this because it is a, a way of coping. If you only need a very small income, then you can get by on on you know on little, and and so that keeps the pressure off. Um, so that's that's one solution from from my point of view. I do. I do really love collaborating, working with uh, with others, and uh, so from my point of view, looking looking to the future, that's something I expect to do more of. I hope to do more of in the future, as long as these all these young guys will, you know, be willing to work with some old so and so like me. Yeah, I think we're pretty cool old guys, to be honest with you. You know, <laughs> um, I, I hope I do have some plans on things, that, you know, that I'm working on with the art center, and if they come to fruition you know, a speaker series and a few other things, um, you know, hopefully, you know, you might make a trip uh, across the big, big pond and uh, spend some time and, you know, do some things here. It'd be a lot of fun to connect with you either over there sometime or, or over here. Um, but uh, bottom line is this has been too long, you know, since we've connected. I'm glad we've had this opportunity to talk. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that after all these years, you've got to, you know, close the gallery and the, the cafe, but, um, you know, something good may come of it, I believe. I really do believe in that, um, you know, from, like I said, speaking from my own experience, anything I can do to help you and support you as far as, you know, what my website can do, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. And um, 
the spent the last bit of time talking. I mean, we could go on for hours, but people would probably start turning us off. So I'm sure they will. I want to do is you know, maybe after uh, the new year, and you know, you're moving on, we can reconnect and talk about, you know, what's happening, where you're going and, and so forth. And plus some of the other things we've discussed, but anyway, we're not going to be strangers anymore. And, um, for you to take the time today, you know, in the middle of your afternoon, or I'm still drinking my coffee here uh, at, at my time, um, you reconnect and, uh, you know, talk about photography, something we both love so much. Um, I can't thank you enough. Kevin, it's been an absolute pleasure, and uh, we'll look forward to the next time. So, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, Joe, thank you for being a part of this little discussion. I call it the conversations. That's not so much as an interview, and uh, we will visit again. Thanks, everybody. Please look at uh, the description below for the links to Joe's site. Hit that subscribe button. That can help us out a whole bunch. And, uh, you know, stay tuned. We've got more of these coming, and I appreciate your loyalty to the Photo PXL uh, website and the community. And uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>